Welcome to Legends with Bevan Jones. Thanks to Anytime Fitness Glenelg and Bigfords Australia. Well, good day. Welcome to another edition of Legends with Bevo, the show where we chat to past and present sports people, entertainment icons, and those doing great things in the community. And today we're joined by a man who certainly has done great things in the community and in the world of football, Aussie rules. That Andrew Newton Jarman, he played 165 games for North Adelaide, 51 for Nord, a two time McGarry medalist in 1987 and 1997, and also a Premiership player in both of those years. Represented South Australia on 15 occasions, and he's a South Australian Hall of Famer as well, in terms of the Sandful perspective. And I better not forget as well to mention he played 110 games for the Adelaide Crows. Jars, great to have your legends with Bevo. Bevo, <laughs> this is one of the great moments in my life, my friend. Oh, I've heard a lot about Bevo, the legend with Bevo, and now I'm with you. Mate, oh, thanks for having us, buddy. No, that's an absolute pleasure to have you on. And, of course, I better mention the rush hour. Doing great things there with uh, the young Burn, 5.30, weeknights on Triple M. Mm. Let's get stuck into that and talk about that first. Uh, what's it like being with Bernie Vincent? How does he compare with the, with the great Dale Lewis? Well, it's hard work, <laughs> honestly. We've, tried, we've, we've got the wrong trade. Buddy Bernie, the country boy, the lovable rogue, good-looking too he is. So I'm out of my league, but he's, uh, he's been a, uh, a wonderful young man. He's very passionate and, uh, yeah, look, obviously uh, Dale Lewis moved on and uh, we had a great relationship and I miss Louis already, but again, uh, another opportunity comes up and uh, Bernie Vince uh, will do very well in the media. He's bubbly, he's, uh, he's excitable and he's very passionate about uh, people. Well, I do love that Bernie's... For those people that haven't heard that, I, I, I suggest getting on the Rush Hour podcast, podcast now and listen back to that. Yeah. <laughs> and the yellow caps, I must admit, Jazz, I'm not a fan of the yellow caps at all. Uh, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, mate. So what we're going to bring in the AFL next year is, say, say Tex Walker's kicks six goals up to three-quarter time, he's going to wear a red cap. <laughs> hey, that's where it's going. Oh. So the leading goal scorer has to wear a red cap. Uh, you know, honestly, honestly, what are they thinking? This, anyway, is, this is, is to do with the Big Bash, of course, I should actually yes. add to those people that don't watch the Big yeah. Bash. Um, the, basically, the run scorer, leading run scorer and the leading wicket taker is required to wear the yellow cap from the Big Bash at Please. the moment. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> and black socks and black shoes Can't in cricket as well. It. Can't stand it. I thought cricket was all white, <laughs> isn't it? You know, you go to Wimbledon, all white. But oh, no, nah, these little uh, upstart cricketers now want to wear black shoes and black socks. Oh, mate. Sorry, mate. I don't know what's going on. No, nah, they've gone rogue. <laughs> they have. <laughs> I don't know about you, but there seem to be too many games in the Big Bash this season. There's games at 3.10 that most folks can't even get to. And I know they're trying to cram in games for TV ratings, but too much cricket. Look, love cricket. Been a passionate cricketer all my life. Uh, my family were wonderful cricketers in their day. Um, Big Bash, they were in 2015, 2016, 2017, they were averaging 30,000 per game attendances, right? Now, the attendance is around 20,000 per game. So they've lost about 10,000 fans because there's too much. There's 14 games. Uh, go back to eight. Go back to a, a four-week program. You get all the Australians playing, fast and furious, in and out. And that's what I call it, Big Bash. Yes. But now, it's slow, it labours along, time <laughs> out, get stuffed. Hang on, is that out? Oh, no, it's scratching my nose. <laughs> <laughs> so, greed, greed, and more greed. Yeah. Honestly. Well, let's talk about your footy career. Let's get things uh, happening there because that's certainly something that's definitely not boring and uh, it's very, very interesting to talk about. Now, 110 games you played for the Adelaide Crows. You were one of the first ever players picked by Graham Collins in the early 90s by the mighty Adelaide Crows. Um, what was this like and uh, what was your favourite game playing for the Adelaide Crows? Look, it was a, a, a wonderful chapter, an inter interesting chapter. Uh, spent six years being uh, one of the original players with 45 other blokes. And, uh, you know, we all came from nine other uh, sample clubs. Um, didn't know where it was going to go. Um, and, and look, it was tough early, really hard early, because we are playing in a, an established VFL, slightly AFL competition, with the Eagles being in there. And um, So it, it, it was, it was... It was really hard and really tough, but the boys who were in United, Graham Corns did a wonderful job early on in setting up the program. We could have won a 93 grand final, really. We could have won a premiership, um, and obviously that prelim final still haunts a lot of us. Uh, 45 points up at half time, whatever it was, and uh, all over them, but that's another story. But it, it was a great chapter, and, and, and it was, was part-time footballers, 
we all had full time jobs, um, and and we young, you know, some of us had young families, and yeah, we didn't know what to expect. But that first game um, against Hawthorne, round one, that's etched in, 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 in with me for the rest of my footy life. And life is that we were playing against a superstar side in Hawthorne who'd won a premiership a couple of years before that, and my brother was playing for him, which was hard. And that didn't go down with our Scottish mother, God bless her soul. Um, and we ran out onto the ground and there was, what, 45,000 people there. So we didn't know what to expect. And they didn't know what to expect. And then the rest is history. We came out and smashed it by 87 points. It was meant to be. And then and the rest of it was just bloody hard work until they started winning you know, a premiership in 97. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good uh, career, that's for sure. Do you feel as though there's any, um, I guess, uh, hard feelings towards Blighty for, for cutting it at the end of 1996, or are you guys on OK terms now? Oh, look, Ma- Malcolm Blight's a unique individual, and he'll tell you he's unique. Don't worry about that, old Blighty, but uh, he's got the runs on the board. So he, um, you know, he, he, he was a coach that uh, tried to, you know, play to the edge. Um, he threw the rule book out, and, you know, he had a wonderful side with the Geelong football side, but still couldn't win a premiership. And then, obviously, he thought he was time was up. But he had to make those tough decisions at the Adelaide Crows. And, and they had to be some tough decisions because 95, 96 under Robert Shaw was disastrous. Also, we lost Sean Wren. And once he went down with consecutive knee um, injuries, that killed us. I, 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 I'll never forget the night. Uh, 96, we were five and zip or six and zip flying. St Kilda, I think it was a Saturday night, we were flying. And I, and I remember this to this day. I called Rennie in. Rennie, yours. He went up for a mark and he came down and bang, I could hear the crack. And I said to myself, and I said, oh, I've gone, we're done. Our season's done. Because he was the heart and soul of that side at the time. Big Sean Wren, the big puss. He was flying. But when he got back, what did the Crows do in 97, 98? With Sean Wren. Won premierships. Yeah. So, your answer. But Blighty had to make those tough decisions. Um, it is, it's football, that's what it is. You, you can't hold grudges forever. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I, I didn't fit Malcolm Blight's plans. I, I felt I had another year or two to go. I felt, um, you know, we've got to get my brother back from Hawthorne for the start of 96. But you know what? It is what it is. And you've had a number of, um, obviously, personal achievements with yourself with your footy career. Um, what's been some of your highs and your lows, Jars? State games. State games for South Australia. Real state of origin. You know, we, were, we had a wonderful group of people that had, a, you know, Cornsey was our coach, but, you know, we were enemies most of the year, but for that, you know, four or five times, or four, four days of the year that we caught up and played against Victoria or WA, brothers, you know, Kernahans, McDermott's, McGuinness, Bradley, uh, Motley, you know, we were really tight. So when we'd go into camp, it was like we'd been playing together for 10 years. Now, that's unique. Today's young men from South Australia, they'll never get that opportunity. They'll never, ever get that opportunity. And it's so sad. It is really sad that they don't have 15 state jumpers at home. You know, Victorian boys. So that was one of the highlight and pinnacles uh, of, of, of my career, footy career. And obviously, premierships, they mean a lot. They, they keep that bond together. Premierships are hard to get. They're not easy to, you know, more so in the elite side of things. So I cherish them. Um, and I cherish every minute that I had with building relationships with players and teammates, ex-teammates. And, you know, I've got some great friends from the Adelaide Crows. I've got great friends from North Adelaide and Nord. So I cherish those moments. And in terms of some of the lows, obviously uh, being cut by the Crows. Oh, well, that was shattering. Yeah, yeah. That, that was shattering. No one likes to be sacked. No one likes to be de- uh, delisted from, you know, from your organisation. No, not at all. But it's the way you bounce back. So I went back to Nord in 97 and I got really fit and I remember telling Wally Miller, the great, uh, the great administrator that he is at Nord, that I, when I, because I'd signed with Nord uh, at the start of um, 1990, um, I felt it was time for a change from North Adelaide and, I, and then when I got picked from the Adelaide Crows, I remember having a coffee with Wally and I said, one day I'll come back and win a premiership for this footy club and I was, I was true to my word and he's never forgotten it and neither has Gary McIntosh, which means a lot to me because he's one of my... You know, one of the players that I've always respected and loved, G. McIntosh. So, and that's what happened. So, you go back, yep, yeah, it's not the same, but you win a premiership, you have some individual success, 
but you leave on a you know, leave on, leave on a positive, and that was the most important thing for me. And that's a credit to you, Jazz. Absolutely. Um, you're a bit of a prankster, as we know. You're certainly one of the funniest football players ever played for the Crows and, and the Sandful as well. Um, what's been one of the, the funniest pranks that you've played on someone that you've actually seen as part of the footy team oh, clubs well, you played for? So. I, 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 I thought, I, for me, football's entertainment. And I've been called all sorts. But for me, football is about entertainment. People pay their money to be entertained. We don't have characters left in football. They're gone. And, and players can't express themselves because they'll get smashed in social media. So if you look back in history, all the characters, and then that's why people come to the game. They want to see their characters. They want to see their rat bags. They want to see their scallywags. And for me, football was about entertainment. But you've got to back it up. If you're going to do handstands, you've got to back it up. If you're going to kiss the crowd and wave, you've got to back it up. If you want to... But, you, but that's, what, that's what the beauty of the game, because you, when you... Walk after a game, and I'd walk through the crowd. You hear people say, "Oh, mate, loved you. Yeah, Jars was funny today, or Jars had a great game. Jars is a character. I'll bring you back next week and see what Jars." You, you want to hear that stuff, and that's your job. That's what people pay to be entertained. No one entertains you in tennis. <laughs> no one entertains you in the flame and A-League. Oh, Kyrgios sort of. Kyrgios is yeah, on Taylor, borderline. So, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. give you that. I'll give yeah. you that. Um, you now the great cricketers. Who, who entertains us in cricket? Good point. Yeah, yeah. It's about entertainment. And, yeah. and AFL football, um, and, and because everything's tight now, you, you've got to have those, you've got to have those, you've got to encourage those characters and let them go, let them breathe and, 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 and be themselves. You know, Jordan the Gully would be no doubt a real character. Yeah. But mate, they've got a, they got a, they got a chain on him. Yeah. You know, let him go. Yeah. Anyway, so that's how I built my game on, is, is you know, that type of back it up, you know, worked hard on my skills with my brother and, and all that kind of stuff, but that's what it's about, far as I'm concerned. And having a lot of fun, so. Well, it's, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Isn't, isn't footy meant to be fun for two hours? Absolutely. But today's kids have got it wrong. It's, they've, back, they've flipped it around. I agree. Monday yeah. to Friday, they're full time, but the two hours that they play, they're, they're depressed, they're, 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 they're intense, they're hunched over. No. We need more characters like you for bowlers and these sort of guys well, in the game. Yeah, well, you just yeah. loosen it up and let yeah. it breathe. But anyway. Yeah. yeah. And in terms of like the, the footy club side of things, uh, was there a few pranks at the Adelaide Crows back in the day or any of the club? Oh, there's clubs? always pranks. Yeah. There, there's yeah. always, you know, shoving buddy all bottles up. You know, I had a massage table that was locked in. That was mine. And I used to have, I wanted my oil warm and had my favourite masseur. Right, I'm in. And then um, I go and have a shower or go in the tub and I go and get right. And then one of the young lads, Stephen Rowe, a good, very dear friend of mine, was lying on the table. And, and I've gone, what's going on here? And I had the towel around me like bloody Daniel Craig. What's going on here? And he's gone, oh, no, I just got to have a massage. He said, get, up, get off my table. I'm booked in. So I grabbed my water bo- oil bottle and shoved it right up his biscuit, lemonade and <laughs> his clackety. He had to get his kidney out the next day. He was, he was oiled up inside, all right? That, that didn't go down well because he missed that next week. Oh, Jesus. He was, he, was, he was squirting out oil all night. Well, Rory's a pretty funny man. I'm sure oh, he would have got you back. So. I know, he didn't. I was on guard all the time. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. And uh, in terms of the toughest opponent, obviously in state games and playing AFL and samples, who's some of the toughest opponents you come against, Joe? Well, I've got to say, Gary McIntosh is right up there. It's, you know, wonderful footballer, one of the best footy brains I've played against. He's right up there. Um, there was a bloke called David Pisani, who was a, um, a strong mid, who was a tagger for the West Torrens Footy Club back in the day. He was tough. I had nightmares about him because he was just so strong. So he, he drove me nuts. Um, Greg Williams was tough. Uh, back in the day, he was really tough um, uh, in terms of uh, you know trying to be get on top of him. Um, but other than that, I really yeah, I, I always tried to back myself in and, and yeah, try you either try and break even or you just smash him. Yeah, and certainly um, yeah, he certainly has some good battles over the years. And I think we spoke about this off air as well. You played against Johnny Platten and you played with him in the state games, plus a number of other guys as well. And and those relationships that you now have. You know, going up against each other and playing with them is just awesome, isn't it, this footy? So. Well, that's what it's about, isn't it? That's, yeah. that's what the footy family's all about, and we look after each other. I, I always, you know, I was talking to Grantly Filky today um, just to see how he's going. So, what I, you know, as a, as a teammate, and a, I, 
and as a mate, it, what, what we try and do is catch up every couple of months, the ex Trays boys, um, led by Michael Taylor, the great Michael Taylor. But the thing is, is I try and bring, I try and make five phone calls a day to five teammates that I've, you know, each day to see how they're going, you know, making sure they're all right and, and we've got to catch up for coffee. It's just important, especially our, at our age now, we've just got to touch base and make sure we're all right because we are pig-headed, we're stubborn, we're old school, but, you know, we've got to look after each other. Yeah, well done on that one, mate. So, and your coaching career, um, obviously you've had a number of years beyond playing footy where you've gone as a coach in, uh, for North Adelaide, took them to the finals for the first time in a long time, went over and coached in Perth and you coached Iron Bank in the Adelaide Hills and most recently, recently five years at Gazer. Yeah. You finished up at the end of last year. Um, any future aspirations as coaching any other club? Or? Well, look, had been doing it for a while and you're only as good as your talent on the park and the, play that, you know, the, the, the players that you can recruit. Clubs are really struggling for resources. Um, so enjoyed the North Adelaide at that period where we were a basket case and had some wonderful support with Rob Gerrard and, and, and we changed a few things and, and then it was just playing good sexy footy and got the crowds back and away we went. So that was great. A couple of years in Perth, that was tough. Different culture. Um, they rely on sponsorship. They don't, didn't rely on poker machines. So, but really enjoyed the you know, the opportunity to go over there for a couple of years, and then and then did some local footy, which is which is tough. It's it's not easy for clubs now to because players today's players they're smart. They go to the country where all the money is. Metro footy uh, and, and and to a degree is is you know is heading in deep water because players now you look at all the, the good players coming out of the sample they go to the hills they go to they go out you know york peninsula and they go down you know, deep down buddy um south getting bucket loads of cash to play footy and train one night a week more than the sample isn't it? more than the so, sample yeah. so so for me in the next five to seven years there's there's you know there's there's some concerns about the sample there is concerns about grassroots footy yeah, well, let's hope um, that things can turn around with, with both of those things because both competitions, we absolutely love jars. So, now, before I let you go, I've got a funny story to, uh, to share. This will be got, good. Yeah, I got told recently by the one and only Ken KG Cunningham. Oh, George. Uh, he told me that Marion actually asked you to buy some milk back in the day and you, you, uh, you rocked home three weeks later. Talk to us about this. <laughs> Hasn't this story enhanced? <laughs> wow. Rock. Well, hang on. George, if you're, if you're listening to this, George, watching, I'm telling you right now, you're in trouble. That was between you and I in the car, I told you that. Now look, okay, so we finished the year off, um, I think it was end of 92, my wife was pregnant with our second child, it was, so we had a big night the Saturday night, and then I was a bit seedy the Sunday morning, and it was about 10 o'clock, but my wife's gone, can you go and get some milk and, some, and, a, and a video for the kids? And back in those days, it was the old cat, you know, the VHS, whatever you called it. And I said, yes, love. So I've gone down to the shop, and then you used to have those brick phones. Yeah. So Jamo's rang. I said, yes, mate. He goes, oh, we're, at the, uh, we're in the metro, Metropolitan. Do you want to come in for a beer? I said, oh, mate, I'm just getting some milk and video. I said, he goes, just come in for one. I said, all right, all right, I'll come in for one then. And I've, so I've driven, I've gone into town, parked my car, so I can't remember where I left it, but anyway, gone in, and it's three days later, not three weeks, I've got home. <laughs> Still be in the bad books. For oh, sure. well, I had my two suitcases already out the front. She, she bloody gave it to me big time. Oh, poor thing, I felt so bad. And my kids, you know, they didn't get... I thought, jeez. And, and when I got home, I said, love, do you want me to go and get some milk in the video? <laughs> <laughs> but 30 years later, we're still, still together. With it. Exactly. Uh, Shout so, out to yeah. So anyway, so <laughs> thanks, George. <laughs> Oh, well, Andrew Newton-Jarman, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on today. Um, big shout out to the boys at Canetto Cafe for letting us film here, your legends. Um, yeah, Freddie. And to Jeff and our sponsors, Anton Fitness, and of course, our Big Fins Australia. Thanks for sponsoring us. Mate, what can I say? Well done. Absolute Good pleasure. On you, Good on you, mate. Keep up the good Keep work, Keep up the great work of the rush hour and, uh, with you and Burn. And don't forget, 5.30 weekdays on Triple M 104.7 Adelaide. You can listen oh, to that. Oh, well, he so. knows his stuff. See you next time, guys. <laughs>